Hi, my name is John Hottenroth, and I'm a market development manager here at National Instruments with a specific focus area on non-destructive tests and ultrasonic imaging. And today I wanted to show you how PXI can provide benefits for both industrial and medical applications that are using uh, ultrasonic, uh, uh, ultrasonic non-destructive testing techniques or ultrasonic imaging techniques. So first I want to give you a high level picture of the demo setup and then we'll go specifically into the demo and you'll be able to see the screen a little better. So I have a couple power supplies in my PXI chassis and the power supplies are providing power for the high voltage pulsar that I have external on the bench. Now this pulsar was designed by uh, Diagnostic Sonar um, and they're a partner who we also worked with on the demonstration um, and the software that you're going to be uh, viewing today. It's a 32 channel pulsar and those 32, uh, 32 pulses are going to come out to our uh, ultrasound transducer. This is a 128 channel array but we only have it hooked up to 32 of the channels because that's uh, what our pulsar is capable of in this case. We're going to be looking at a steel sample today and the steel sample has a uh, kind of V configuration of, of holes drilled in the side. So the holes are one and a half millimeter diameter and we're going to be looking um, and showing how we can actually see the holes in the steel sample. But the same technology can apply to carbon fiber composite or any of a number of other materials. And again, as I mentioned, the, the same technology applies for medical as well. So we're going to generate our high voltage pulses. It'll convert it into an ultrasound signal. Uh, it'll come into the material, reflect back, and then we're going to be receiving that same signal back on the 32 channels um, of, the, of the pulsar module. And that's going to be passed back through these cables to our FlexRio module. Now, the FlexRio module is really the core of the system. And what FlexRio is, is it's something that combines uh, interchangeable I.O. with a user programmable FPGA. In this case, the I.O. that we're using is a 32 channel um, simultaneous sampling ADC, ADC module. So it uses the, T, the Texas Instruments uh, AFE 5801 front end, which gives us 12 bit resolution um, and 50 mega sample per second sampling. Um, again, we're using four of those to give us the full 32 simultaneous cham channels. Now that uh, front end also combines additional option or additional uh, features like a programmable array to give us things like time variable gain, as well as filtering options all built into the front end. So this is specifically designed for these types of applications. Now once the data is, is acquired from the ADCs, um, it's going to go into the FPGA module, um, which is uh, a module that basically combines a high performance Vertex 5 FPGA from Xilinx and allows uh, the user to actually define the functionality of that module, in this case to take data, perform additional processing, and that processing could be anything from fast Fourier transforms to peak detect to uh, gating to uh, filtering um, or really any of, of a number of of different algorithms that, that the user wants to define as well, um, and even triggering options. So the FPGA module um, basically takes the data from the adapter module and then also connects to the high throughput bus that we have in the PCI, or excuse me, in the PXI backplane. And the PXI backplane provides high throughput um, up to 800 megabytes per second if we're using PCI Express back to our host PC. So in this case, um, we're acquiring data doing some initial processing and then passing the data back to the, the computer or the embedded controller in this case for additional processing and display. All right, moving to our demo. We've created a LabVIEW interface and so we've used LabVIEW to program uh, basically what's happening both on the PC or on the host side as well as what's happening inside the FPGA. And so we have the ability to configure various aspects of the array including the number of elements, in this case um, the frequency, which we've, we, we're using a three and a half megahertz array, uh, and a variety of other functions, acquisition parameters, uh, the beam forming processing that we're actually going to be implementing to create the image, and then various characteristics of the display as well. So on the acquisition tab, I've selected my target configuration to be uh, basically this steel sample that I showed you previously. And um, 
I'm going to select that target configuration. On the right side, I can see our cascade plot. So this is basically our 32 channels of the, uh, uh, that we're acquiring. And we're basically seeing those in real time. Now when I move my array across the steel sample, we can see on those 32 channels that basically we can see that, that something's happening. So I'm just moving it back and forth. Uh, and I can see that, that we're receiving um, some, indicating some sort of discontinuity um, that we're receiving back from the, from the uh, ultrasound pulses that we're sending out. And obviously, we, act, we need to see, or we need to perform additional signal processing to actually uh, turn that into an image. And so uh, we've done that, so we have the beam forming processing that actually allows us to view the holes um, in the steel sample, and we can see the configuration that we have. So, the ultrasound pulses are coming from the left of our screen, and you can see we can, that we have one, two, three, four, five, six holes. Again, I mentioned they're one and a half millimeter um, drilled holes in the side of the steel. I can actually normalize this to give us a little bit better re resolution, and we can see uh, that we even have the ability to uh, look at the 3D image. And again, as I go across, uh, we can view that real uh, or that image in real time um, of, of, of the holes in the sample. We also have the ability to change uh, configurations like adding or subtracting filtering. So I had the filter option enabled or the high pass filter option enabled and we can see the impact that that has both on the image um, as well as how uh, fast it's updating. And so one of the nice parts about an FPGA is that we can um, specifically move processing into or add processing uh, in the FPGA without actually impacting the performance of our application. Now I'm going to switch over to another configuration where we're looking at the full depth of the steel. Again, I'm going to select my configuration. It's going to take a moment for it to, to load and, and update the parameters. And then once I do that, I can see again, uh, this is our full steel sample. So we have uh, our front wall on the left, we can see again our six holes that are in the middle of the, the sample. And then we have the back wall here on the right. So what we're showing with this demo is really that, um, that the, the FlexRio platform that combines uh, the interchangeable I.O. with the user programmable FPGA can, can, be, can be combined with software uh, to give a lot of flexibility and customizability um, to really allow you to optimize um, for a variety of applications, both for industrial and medical applications. So I thank you for taking the time to watch this demonstration video. I hope you learned about how uh, FlexRio can combine uh, interchangeable I.O. to give us very high channel counts and even the ability to scale to 64 or 128 or 256 channel arrays. Combining that with uh, user-defined processing from um, from filtering to gating to even beam forming uh, processing that uh, you may want to perform and giving us really just a very flexible and customizable platform for a variety of, of different applications on both uh, industrial and medical uh, non-destructive test and ultrasonic imaging. Thank you.